They are raised. The end time amen that God is preparing to take the stage before Jesus returns. Remember, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies their footstool. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 3. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. That's an army. Rule thou in the midst of the enemy. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. They shall be enlisted through the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. They shall be men and women under the deal of the anointing. This army will precede the coming of the Lord. And Savior shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the month of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Obadiah verse 21. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. The enlistment process has been on. Some of us got enlisted some time back and trying to go through the ranks. Some have been enlisted among you. Others will just be enlisted today. <laughs> this is the end time glorious army of the Lord. This is the army that will rescue the saints from servitude. It's an army of pathfinders, pace setters, and trailblazers. The world has never seen their kind, neither would there be any after them until the years of many generations. Before this army, a fire burned, and behind them, a flame. The land before this army shall be like the Garden of Eden. So your enlistment, that is, they shall be operating in the heavenlies. And behind them, a desolate wilderness. And ye, nothing shall escape them. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. When these men fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall walk everyone in his ways and everyone in his path. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one need to thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his way. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Before, because his camp is very great. And great is he that executed his war. It is that kind of army you are being called to enlist into. It is the army of men and women living in another world. Living in another world. These are men like spirits. These are men like angels. This is so vital. There are two fundamental requirements for enlistment and I'll be sharing this with us in this first segment in 1st John chapter 2 and verse 13 and 14 I've written unto you fathers because ye know him from the beginning that is from the beginning and I've written unto you, young men, one, because you have overcome the wicked one. 
you have overcome. So only overcomers are enlistable. Overcomers. You overcome the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You overcome youthful loss. You are separated unto God. With a sense of responsibility. Only overcomers are enlistable. You have overcome the wicked one. You have overcome the man of sin. You have overcome the vices of the day. Only overcomers in Christ are enlistable. So you can't wish your way into that army. You can only overcome your way into it. According to scriptures, people become enlistable into the army from the age of 20. Amen. Amen. In Numbers chapter 1 from the from 20 and even to 50, I mean to 30, you enlist them into the army. Not just any time. There is a period slate for it. You can't join Nigeria, I mean, at my age now. Okay, to do what? One, they won't take you. You'll be a liability. There is no way to get enlisted as an astronaut outside your teenage period. There is no way. You misbehave when you get there. So you are in your enlistment season. And that should get you to determine whether to be enlisted in this glorious army or to remain among the victims of the end time. Rule down in the midst of their enemies. Very important. That's why the enemy introduces so much vices among the youth to disqualify them from enlistment so they can remain grounded on the floor. It takes a determined separation unto God to qualify for enlistment. A determined separation unto God to qualify for enlistment. Then he went on in verse 14. I will tell you, you young men, because the word of God, because you are strong, and the word of God abided in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Amen. Because you are strong. Now, you, see, you don't get enlisted in the army without your endurance being tested. They call it endurance test. How strong and agile is this individual? So this is the time to build spiritual energy into your system. To qualify for enlistment and to be retained in that army. You need to build spiritual energy by the word of God. By prayers that opens the word to you. You see, most of the time we just take the Bible, we take, uh, you know, tablets, take iPads, Take all kinds of stuff and be reading nonsense. He said, Call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you. There are things we never see until you pray. There are things we never see until you pray. And there are others we never see until you pray and fast. Then shall your light break forth as the morning. That's why they say we give ourselves wholly to prayers and to the ministry of the world. They work together. It's like hand in gloves. Only 
the truly prayerful flow in revelation. When I'm searching for anything of importance, I search in prayers and fastings with searchings. Because you are strong. Because you are strong. Long before he called me to ministry, I was already a terror to the devil. I was invading strange places for God and I had no idea of going to ministry. I was already making altar calls for witches. A show of strength. Because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked. You know, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Increases strength. So it takes spiritual strength to be enlistable. It takes what? Now listen to this. Who are in the crusade, 1981 or 80. I can't remember. 80 or 81. And then I was ministering and someone was interpreting. And then they came there to demonstrate power. And they threw what they call pepe in the southwest here. They shot the pepe towards the altar. And it hit the man interpreting. Not me. He said, yeah! And I said, peace in the name of Jesus. Now, I was the one ministering. I was the target. But it couldn't come. So you need spiritual strength. This is not the time to keep browsing nonsense. No. Seeking God is no form. It's real hard work. Searching for the invisible is a tough task. Can I tell you this? I have never browsed. Except for the such stuffs. Never that I'm now looking. I've never read anything said about me in my life that I read. That is, you said for me, good. You said against me, it's your opinion. It doesn't make any difference. You know, uh, because I have too many things I'm looking for. I bought newspaper last 1993. Okay, to do what with? Those who make news don't watch them. Now, I've been trying to follow up on the wars that are taking place around the world. You know, almost every nation is in crisis. But now Shiloh had come, the TV is granted. The power connection is disconnected. So there is no way I can, at this kind of time, check anything happening to anybody for any reason. I'm facing to you young men because you are strong. You have a lot of power leakages. Power leakages. Power leakages. You're chatting with somebody you never knew like you were told in the morning. You are not a dummy. For what? With all the crowds around you? Relating with demons? Mommy, what are spirits? And you think you are talking to human beings? I've written to you young men because you are strong. I was undertaking expeditions, fasting expeditions again and again. To read the book of Acts, I was on seven days fast. To read the book of Ezekiel, I was on three days fast on the mountain. I've written to you young men because you are strong. Now, that was in 1977. Come on now. 1977, I was hunting for the power behind the book of Ezekiel. I was 23. 1978, I was hunting for the power behind the book of Acts of the Apostles. 
to a point that my bed could not contain me. I had not been called to ministry then. Enlistment requires that you build strength into your system. Whether you are in business. You see, there are people in politics that will be there like Daniel. Yes. Will never do what others do. Yes. Yet yeah, they can't sideline them. Yes. Yes. Yet yeah, they cannot sideline them. If I'm in politics today, I won't spend one dime to win an election. One. I will bring my victory from heaven and they have to respect it. That's what you need. It takes building strength into yourself. Building spiritual strength to qualify for enlistment. You want to enlist in the army? They subject you to runnings, to climbing barriers, to just see how agile you are. How do you now suppose that God will just enlist anybody on the street? You are in the season of enlistment, but not without fulfilling the fundamental requirements. Are you a committed overcomer? My wife and I were in Koshi for six years. And then one day the devil came to me and said, I'll make sure you fall by fornication. And I said, Satan, you are a dummy. And I said, Lord, if I try this, strike me with leprosy. Only overcomers are enlistable. Not yet, yet people. Only overcomers are enlistable. You can't be there in the army of the Holy God. Be living a messy life. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of their power. In the beauty of holiness, he said, Thou hast the deal of thy youth. <laughs> Only overcomers are enlistable. One of my friends is here in church. He said, every time in those days, I said, man, I'm off to the mountain. They keep wondering, what is Brother David looking for? We were living in the same apartment. He said, brethren, I'm up to the mountain. So others will sit down by the TV. He said, they didn't know I was investing into a future where they were squandering it. He's in this church today. I just see them watching TV and in those it was black and white, whatever it was. I mean, but that didn't... Uh, because I don't know who is saying what and what they are saying it about. But I've been told what to look for here. When thou seest, seek my face. My heart seeth, thy face, O God, will I seek. And I'll be on the mountain alone. La rusha le karo Only touch light. I wasn't asking for car. I wasn't asking for house. I wasn't asking for anything ephemeral. I was seeking God. I was seeking God to be a blessing to his kingdom. To be a promoter of his kingdom. I never imagined I would be a preacher. It takes strength. I had to take time to be here with you this afternoon. I love you. If you don't go beyond where I stop, you are failures. That's why I'm here. Therefore, grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive it right now. Grace to continue to build spiritual strength. Into your system. Receive it now. Job was the greatest businessman of his time. He was a highly spiritual man. One that fears God and eschewed evil. A perfect man. 
And the Bible said in verse 9, God was testifying, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. <laughs> That's God's testimony of the greatest businessman of those days. So I'm not just talking about an army preaching. I'm talking of the end time army that takes territories in various areas of human endeavors. And he was a man with access to divine secrets. As it was in the days of my youth when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. There is no comparing the values of the secret of God and the secret of man. There is no comparing. What we are operating here, there is no intellectual platform on the face of the earth that can unravel it. No. We are trading divine secrets. All they are doing is exploring intellectual secrets. The gap is wide. So wherever you are, this is what is establishes your place in destiny. The fear of God and your untiring quest for the revelation of the word of God. Again, grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive it now. What Moses couldn't get, Joshua got. Because he heard unto the word of God tenaciously. God said to him, now, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night. Then you make your way prosperous and you have good success. Now he said to him in verse 5, be strong. Verse 8, be strong. Verse 9, be strong. Now you see, be strong, be strong, be strong. And Joshua did all that the Lord commanded him. You had it in the morning. All. All. And so he saw all that God promised come to pass. Grace to become an addicted word practitioner. Receive it today. Today.